technical analyst Onur, Inir, Inir, Onur uh, good to have you on the show. Sorry for that. Um, so now that the deadline for the YPGs are sort of uh, clear, the border area has expired, what are Turkey's options? Well, first of all, I'm sure the uh, Turkish government will, you know, assess the, uh, uh, assess the uh, current situation, see if the clearance that was uh, guaranteed by the Russians on the areas which they, you know, which they agreed upon is, is done. So, uh, it's, as you said, it's only been 24 minutes. It's too early uh, to really uh, assess anything. I believe the Russians have declared that it's fully cleared. Actually, it was cleared before the deadline. Mm -hmm. But this is, again, it has to be confirmed by the Turkish forces. I mean, looking at the lines coming out from Ankara, uh, Turkey's Foreign Minister, Mirut Çavuşoğlu, as well as the Secretary of Defense, uh, Minister of Defense, Hulusi Akar, said, you know, they, they weren't quite hopeful. And now we're hearing, we're hearing uh, the Russians saying, okay, it's cleared before the deadline. It seems there isn't sort of a common denominator here. Yes, there, there, it seems so, but also let's not forget, just a few days ago, uh, I think the, uh, one of the top Russian officials, I remember if it was the uh, Secretary of uh, uh, Defense or, or, the, uh, or the Foreign Minister of Russia, that said, if after the deadline, if there's any YPG uh, forces uh, or elements left, they will be d destroyed by Turkey. So they do understand the ramifications of uh, uh, what a, what a one, not 100% not clearance would be, and they do seem to uh, you know, be okay or concur that. So we'll see. It's, it's, as I said, as we said, <coughs> excuse me, it's too early. Uh, Russians are uh, declaring that it, it is fully clear. Uh, we like to presume that it, that is true. But again, it, it's, it really needs to be verified by the Turkish but military un, forces. But under the Sochi agreement, uh, what was supposed to happen after this 150-hour deadline expired was that there were going to be joint patrols by Turkey and Russia within this 10-kilometer buffer zone in northeastern Syria. Uh, patrolling the area seems to me different than what Turkey could do if it sees that YPG elements have not left the area. True. But let's not forget, patrolling, the joint patrol, that would certainly or 100% meets Turkey's demands, would be enough for Turkey. Unlike Russia, unlike US, uh, who have some sort of interest in the area. Yeah, whatever they are declaring or have declared is one thing. Whatever they have, if they have, if anything, in the back of back of their mind is something else. But Turkey's concern in the area is very simple, and uh, President Erdogan has been saying this from day one. We need uh, to secure our border, and we need to make sure that border security does not uh, affect our internal security as well. So, if Turkey, within with those joint patrols, are not satisfied, that is main uh, need for, for, with this operation, peace spring, and other things are not met 100%, this will go further. So it's not like the, uh, if you remember, it wasn't too far, uh, too, too many days ago, where we had some sort of pseudo patrols with the US, which turned out to be nothing. It, it, it was just going around in circles, establishing nothing. This will not be that way, especially after the determination that the Turkish government and the Turkish military has, you know, literally portrayed on the field with Operation Peace Spring. So if those 10 kilometer joint patrols do not 100% satisfy the needs of the Turkish military, hence the Turkish government, uh, further actions will be taken, you could be assured of that. Turkey is continuing to experience some displeasure with the relationship, the ongoing relationship between the United States and the YPG. We know that President Trump actually tweeted about its, uh, its, its leader, Muslim Kobani. Uh, we've just heard from Turkey's communications director, Fahrit Naltun, He's just issued a recent tweet. Uh, let's bring that tweet up for our viewers. He basically said that we reiterate that the recognition of a terrorist leader by our allies will be detrimental to our relations. It's a violation of national and international laws. It is also against the spirit of alliance and strategic partnership. Farid and Altun also added that short-sighted policies to our region will create long-lasting problems and amplify risks to international security. And that U.S. authorities must not only deny terror leaders any visas, but also cooperate with allies to bring them to justice. It seems to me that Turkey is extremely disturbed, continues to be disturbed by this relationship between uh, a state actor, a country, a NATO ally, and a non-state actor and a terrorist organization. 
I mean, why wouldn't it be? I mean, this is no different uh, if, if Turkey has issued a visa and welcomed the head of Taliban, you know, five, ten years ago. Or it's, it's no different than any of the terrorist organization's leaders, you know, invited by Turkey or, or somewhere else. Uh, it's, it's been a problem starting with the Obama administration. This seems to be a bipartisan uh, fault on the, on the American side. Uh, really, ha it's not going to affect, it has already affected Turkish-American relationships. Uh, hopefully this will come to an end very soon and it will uh, prevent further damage to Turkish-American relationship, uh, which, has, which it has already done. There is no reason, there is no um, point in uh, welcoming uh, anybody like, ter anybody, any terrorist like Kobani or any terrorist organization like the YPG. Who in, 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 indeed is, you know, PKK. Mm -hmm. This is not. This is not something we're saying. This is something Lindsey Graham said in the past. This is something Secretary Carter said in the past. This is something, uh, you know, indirectly Trump even even said recently. So it's not like they have to make a choice. They either want to get. They either going to stop relationship with a terrorist organization, even if it's serving their needs. I'm talking about the U.S. Or they're going to choose the side of a uh, long-standing ally. It's as simple as that. Right, I want to ask you one final question. How do you think the mood is going to be like when President Erdogan visits Washington, D.C. in about uh, two and a half weeks? President Trump is a very hard guy to read. I mean, you could, you, you know, you know, he could say one thing in the morning, say something exactly opposite by, by the supper. So I'm, I believe just the way he, the, the, the character that he is, since the invitation come, came directly from him, and since it's, it's going to be held in his house, the White House, I'm led to believe that he's going to come out with something way different. First of all, it's going to be positive, I believe, because he wouldn't have been invited and mm -hmm. President Erdogan wouldn't, wouldn't have, you know, attended the invitation. And I think he's one of those guys who's going to change this uh, scene entirely different. He's probably going to talk about some spectacular stuff. Whether they become uh, realities or not is a different story. Uh, I'm maybe uh, I'm hoping or thinking that it's going to be something on the lines of a, a better relationship when it comes to commerce between the two countries, or something more strategic. Uh, he's not. He has not called. I, I believe he has not called President Erdogan just to talk over on Syria because Syria is already over and done with as mm. far as Turkey and U.S. are concerned. At least so far. We'll see what the future brings. So. I'm certainly expecting something spectacular out of Trump to, to come out of that meeting, uh, whether it be in, in a field of commerce or something else. You know, it's the, when it comes to Trump, it's all up in the air. Let's okay. see what falls down on that day. November 13th, that's the date. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. I do appreciate it.